there's been a lot of interest as far as potassium goes from producers across the southern Great Plains. And Brian, you got into a conversation on Twitter with some producers. Tell, tell me about what their concerns were about potassium. So it actually started off with the University of Arkansas soil fertility specialist, uh, Dr. Trent Roberts, posting a picture of some soybean that he had seen in northwest Arkansas with potassium deficiencies, asking, had, had you seen this? Do you know what this is? Kind of a question. And the conversation started rolling, uh, showing our, our producers in northeast Oklahoma seeing deficiencies. I've personally seen a significant amount of deficiencies across north central Oklahoma. And it all comes down to we have a yellowing of the lower to mid canopy on our soybean crop and the cotton crop as we go through. Now with potassium, the reason for that has been what we expect to be twofold this year. One is just low soil test potassium. Uh, you would expect to see potassium deficiencies where you have low soil test K and you haven't fertilized. But also, a lot of these symptoms are coming with the double crop, maybe a little bit later planted, soybeans, some of the cotton, or we have root restrictions. So here's a good example. We have this big cotton plant right here. We're looking at a very tall cotton plant, and you saw I yanked it out of the ground with very little effort. Yeah. It is wet, we have good soil moisture, but because of the ground we're in right now, we have very limited rooting structure. And so because of that, you're starting to see deficiencies of potassium. So you get leaves like this, where you have chlorosis and yellowing. We have intravenous chlorosis is turning yellow on this, and you also see this on the soybeans, and it's lower leaves. It's attributed, in this case, we have plenty of potassium in our soil, but the roots are small, and the only way these plants, cotton and soybean or some plants, can take up potassium is hitting it with their roots. They've got to come in contact with it. And both cotton and soybean are very heavy K users. It takes a lot of potassium to fill the bowls and fill the pods. Say, say a producer is out scouting their crop and they're, and, and, and they're, and they're not seeing the threshold that maybe they they feel comfortable making an application. What's the potential yield loss if they don't make that application? The potential yield loss is a little bit of environmental dependent. Uh, it's harder to say if we have a soil test value and a good root, we can tell you exactly how much is going to be lost because we have a sufficiency level for that. Right. When it comes to limited rooting being the problem, that the plant can't access the potassium, right. now it's harder to estimate because you don't know the extent that root can reach out and get to new potassium. In some cases, I've seen some soybean fields in the last couple of years that we easily lose 40 to 50 percent of, of the yield potential. Right. But in others where it's just a slight yellowing, slight deficiency, the crop can grow out, the roots start exploring better, the soil moisture, this rain that we just had, will help their roots explore and get to a little bit more of that potassium. So if you just have slightly yellowing, maybe not worry about it, but if you have extreme deficiencies, a deep yellowing and necrosis or dying of tissue, you need to be thinking about what are your options and do you think you can get on some potassium before rain. Thank you very much, Dr. Brian Arnell. And for more information and help with this, visit your local county extension office or visit our website, sunup.okstate.edu.